Good morning and welcome to the East Brandywine Township Board of Supervisors work session for Thursday, October 4th, 2018. Uh, a reminder for everybody, a recording device will be used during this meeting. Um, and are we, Chief, are we swearing in today? Or not? Okay. Um, so, uh, public comment for non-agenda items. Rules for conduct of public meeting established by resolution 2001 The time allotted to each individual making a comment shall be three minutes or or less unless, this, uh, unless set by the presiding officer. Additional public comment may be granted at the discretion of the presiding officer at the conclusion of the meeting. At this time, I'll open it up for public comment for non-agenda items. Matt Kanifeski, 425 Creek Road. Can we bring this up on the display? this photo at my second meeting ever attending. I believe it was the March meeting. Uh, there was only one of these photos presented and only one of these tangible photos in existence that I went to Kinko's and actually paid for an oversized version. Kyle, I gave you the picture specifically. Mm -hmm. yep. And you all emphatically claim that you have absolutely nothing to do with this project. So at my DEP file review with Asad Anari, or whatever his name is, who is the regional manager for DEP, he verified that you guys are absolutely responsible for everything 50 feet off of the embankment up into the road. Now visibly, there is no sediment control. There's 410 feet of directional bore shaft in the picture. There's standing water there's the river in the background. So besides the complete ignorance of your federal requirements for protecting the Brandywine, the only real reason I'm here is Kyle. This picture was obviously taken by me being from inside of my home. How did this picture end up in the hands of Lamb and Mackerlane, the head of the Republican Party? who would assist you in your political venue. My, what, what is my political venue, just so I know? Well, I read your statement from when you lost to Jay Fisher. You said that I lost because I didn't have the GOP support. Okay, so how would that, how would that be helping me to give it to the GOP if they didn't give me support? Well, how did that picture end up in the hands of Lamb? Couldn't tell you. That picture it, is still- I gave it to you on camera. In That's, front of all these Mr. Kampeski, I have no clue where your pictures go. I don't know if you, maybe your cell phone was stolen. Maybe Kinko's employee gave it to somebody. I have no clue. Your photo that you gave to me is sitting in my locker right as we speak. So I, I couldn't tell you where your second photo came from. Well, and Lamb Winder, here and Lamb McElwain are not the head of the Republican Party. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, I gave you the photo. Okay. And Lamb is presenting it. Could not tell you. You can't tell. Could not tell you. So you still have the photo. I have the, well, I have, it was a picture like this, yeah. yeah. But it was probably twice the size of that one. Yeah. Yeah, still have it. So who photocopied it? Couldn't who tell you. It's still stapled. You can count the staples in the pack. It's still stapled together in the exact same pack that you well, gave Well, you would it. agree this is my property. I, it looks identical to the picture you gave me, absolutely. And then you could uh, assume that this is fair to say it was taken from inside of my home being on the second floor with seeing the window partition in it. So Kyle, you were given the photo on video in a public meeting. Okay. How did this end up in Lamb's possession? Couldn't tell you, why don't you ask Lamb? I will. They would have to tell you, so I, I don't know. So there's your answer. No, nothing from anybody. No manager, no nobody. You just I never know. saw the picture. You never saw it was presented at the supervisor meeting, Scott. And I never got a copy of it. All right, so you got your answer. Um, the oh, picture yeah. you gave me is still in my possession in the packet that you gave me. Well, whatever. So you're not going to address the no sediment control, the standing water, the brandy wine in the back. Slouch is just written, riddled with perjury in this paperwork, saying that they did the paper, they did the the process where it says JMF right on the side of the machine. You guys are in big trouble. Okay. Big trouble. All right, thank you. Uh, public comment for non-agenda items, anybody else? <coughs> Seeing none, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the minutes of the previous meetings. Board of Supervisors, August 16th, 2018. 
I move, I move that they be approved as submitted. And I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Planning Commission for August 1st, 2018. Move they be approved as submitted. And I will second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, Aye. Before we go on, we, we have we have skipped uh, the Board of Supervisors meetings um, minutes. And Mary, I don't know if we if you have the date, but we have to get that taken care of. That's been a couple. That was the August. That was, August 16th. That was the August. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. I didn't know if there was another one too. So okay, so we're good. September 20th, Jan is still working on. We should have those that, for the next meeting. That's fine. I just didn't want to miss that one. Um, okay, old business. Uh, proposal to amend the 2016 multi municipal agreement to fund the East Brandon Wine Fire Company. And I'll go to Scott and Luke on this one first. Well, this is an agenda item that was tabled from the last meeting. I don't know if you want me to set it up again or you just want to proceed where you let off. Well, I think right now we, I, I did promise the fire department that we would address this tonight, uh, or today rather. Um, and so what I did is after the last meeting, I, I did have a COG meeting with um, with Joe Morris, and in so many words, it was discussed. Um, I had a lengthy discussion with him, but in so many words, it was um, stated that they are, <coughs> you know, at this point not able to um, to fund it completely, as as was earlier discussed. Um, the the reasoning, uh, you know. Uh, tax increase um, and and um, you know just just it was made it was a decision that was made by a prior board that this board didn't necessarily all come to agreement on so um, so after giving this much thought um, you know I'm going to throw something out here and, and, and see how this goes my biggest concern with our fire department uh, issue was the highest contributor uh, receiving service was Freedom Village and Freedom Village was was not necessarily contributing much towards the fire department so um, I, I know West Gosh or I'm sorry West Brandywine does have plans to sit down with um, with Freedom Village they may have already done that by now I don't know um, but I had this discussion and and I told the fire department that obviously if they need the money, um, in, in my personal opinion, they're going to get the money. Um, you know, we'll hash out how, why, and when later on. Uh, but right now, my thought process was to throw out the idea of rather than when, than having this issue, uh, for whatever the reason is, every year that maybe we do a multi-year agreement with the fire department, one that we're comfortable with and one that they're comfortable with, and we don't have to do that this second, but just we have to keep that going, uh, the dialogue going. And then the second part of that would be uh, an annual increase, you know, of a certain percentage so that w we're covered. We don't have to deal, deal with, um, you know, this, them having stress and, and, and us at the last minute having to come to a plan. For the time being, my idea, um, with help, uh, was to possibly create a small capital reserve account for the fire department to put the shortfall into that account, and then we can still fund at this year's rate, and it gives us time to see what happens with the West Brandywine and the Freedom Village situation. The end all be all is the money's in this account, and then we can hash it out later. And I wanted to run that by everybody and get everybody's opinions on that and see, see uh, where this goes. Well, I, I'm completely in favor of having a, a, a multi-year agreement so that we don't have to face this every year. I think that makes a lot of sense, and I think the fire company deserves to have a predictable source for funding so that they know what they're doing and they can focus on uh, doing the, their training and everything else that they have to do and not, not be involved in this quagmire with West Brandywine every year. Um, so I'm completely in favor of that. But what West Brandywine, my understanding, and, and I, I also want to back up in terms of background, um, the last meeting there was a discussion about a PowerPoint uh, presentation that um, I think Luke and, and Jason participated in, um, and Scott uh, obtained that from West Brandywine, but that was only provided to us either Tuesday or Wednesday of this week. I've looked at it very briefly, and it confirms 
what we were told previously, which is that basically West Brandywine wants to change the formula because they don't want to spend, they don't want to pay their fair share. So they, they're, they're, to me, as far as I'm concerned, they're going about this backwards. They've come up with a number that they want to contribute, and then they want to jockey the formula to, um, to make it come out to that number. And to me, um, that's not the way to go about this. So I, I, I'm in agreement that we need we need to we need to get a contribution from Freedom Village. It needs to go. We need to know where that's going in terms of of uh, what it's paying for, uh, because right now the way the formula is, I admit that those Freedom Village calls are 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 part of West Brandywine's responsibility because it's in West Brandywine. So if Freedom Village if Freedom Village makes a contribution, that should go toward the bottom line of what the fire company needs. Um, but I'm not in agreement to their arbitrary, what I think is arbitrary change to the formula. I'd certainly be willing to sit down. I've got an open mind about the formula. And if they can come back to us or we can sit down with the fire company and look at what the actual cost of fire calls versus QRS calls are and then uh, adjust the formula because of that, I'd be willing to entertain that. But for them to just come in and say, they want to change the formula to make it 80% uh, based on population and assessed value and only 20% based on actual calls, 15% of that being fire calls because the majority of those are in East Brandywine Township. Uh, I don't, there's no rash, there's no logic to that as far as I'm concerned. So I think I, I, well, the last time we discussed this, we had discussed having a joint meeting with them, and I think that that would still be a good idea. Yeah, I think that we need to get the formula situated first with the with West Brandywine as well as Upper Euclid, and then we can visit the the budget and actually start you know deciding what we can do to assist them, uh, whether it be a capital reserve account or um, you know another talk with Freedom Village. I think that's important. I'd be willing to sit down and have another discussion with them. All right. So at this point, I'm, I'm, you know, again, my suggestion. I don't know exactly what the total was. I want to say it was twenty-five or twenty-eight thousand dollars shortfall. Um, at this, at this time, me personally, I'm okay with setting up that capital reserve account um, and uh, setting it aside and figuring it out later. Um, but again, you guys have to vote on If you're not okay with doing it right this second, I'm fine with that. We ju you just gotta get a vote on this so that. Yeah. I, I don't think, to me, I don't think we need to vote on that today because that's not the issue. We're in the budget process now. If we are, from a budgetary standpoint, gonna set up a capital reserve so the fire company feels comfortable that that money's been set aside, we can do that between now and when the final budget's adopted. But what, what I think what's on the table as far as West Brandywine is concerned is whether we're going to agree to their proposed change to the formula. So I'm, I'm, I'm in 100% agreement with you that we <clears throat> gotta make the fire company, we, we, we've gotta fund the fire company budget, but uh, I, I think we need to address the West Brandywine contribution and the formula between now and well, whenever, whenever we need to go forward with that process, and it's unfortunate that they waited until we were in the middle of this year's budget issues to bring this up instead of bringing this up. Like the last time we did this negotiation, I think I said this at the last meeting. We started in January. We had it. We it still took us until August to get everything resolved, and we were a little behind the eight ball in terms of the budget cycle. But we, we made it work that year, the first year we did this. For them to bring this up in August now, to me, is too late to deal with it for 2019. I think we need to look at it going forward. Well, I, and I don't, go ahead. I'm saying, plus the budget committee's here. I figure it'll be, you know, so we can actually tell them to, you know, get that in there. Um, so, and I see Joe Edwards is in the, <laughs> in the audience here. Was this, uh, was this money the shortfall? This was for 2018 shortfall, or was, yeah, absolutely. Good morning. Good morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good morning, Joe Edwards, East Brandywine Fire Company. 
not John, Joe. Um, <laughs> uh, what was your question, Kyle? I'm My sorry. question was the shortfall, the, the, was that 2018 shortfall or is that 2019 shortfall? Well, you can appreciate I'm not the numbers guy. It's Ken Ader and uh, my brother, John Edwards. I believe the $28,000 is where uh, the shortfall for this year's budget is. Um, I can't say that 100% today. Based on last meeting that I was at, based on the other meetings I was privy to, I believe that 28 is the shortfall moving forward with this year's budget. When you're saying this year's budget, you're, we're, we're working the on the proposed budget that you guys are working on for us. 2019, not yeah. for 2018. Okay. So, so we fully funded the fire company for 2018, but we I, agree. I don't think we fully funded them, <laughs> but we came to an agreement with West Brandywine, and, and you guys. Made I, some I, I would be comfortable with that statement that the fire company's budget with concessions was met last year. Okay, so, this year. 18. Yeah, yeah, because that's my main concern. I don't want you guys to have a shortfall in 2018. And, that, and that's our concern also. And I heard you mention that, um, you know, you like to moving forward enter into a budget that addresses an increase and come to a three or four or five year agreement. And I think all the fire company members would be amicable to that. We want, would like to come to the table and talk to you about that. Again, I can't talk to the numbers about that because that's <coughs> Ken Eater and John. But I know that that has been discussed from the people who did the <clears throat> survey with us to throughout the fire company and you guys. Okay. Um, and and my my biggest um, uh, I don't want to say caveat, but the, but the biggest uh, fly in the ointment here is is the Freedom Village issue. So what if um, what if the shortfall? And I hate to say West Brandywine shortfall, but the shortfall was was met by East Brandywine uh, to get you that and then say Freedom Village then uh, contributed more money. Um, how would that work with with the East Brandywine? Uh, would they be reimbursed for the sh for, for the difference if, if it was above and beyond that contract or how would any thoughts to that? Uh, I, I don't. First of all, Freedom Village managing director is Brookdale uh, Senior Living Center. So they would probably be the person that is going to oversee. I don't think the local people from Freedom Village can make the decision to give thousands of dollars to an emergency service. Um, again, I hate to sound like uh, I'm dodging the ball there, but I don't, I don't know. That would be having something you guys would have to work out as a board with, you know, the managing board of our fire company. Basically, I'm the representative for the operations side and representing the fire company today, but can't give you a definitive answer. I said. Yeah, I'll give you a check. I'll give you that check back if they give me a check. You know. I don't. I don't think that's a fire company issue. Yeah. It's an issue between us and West Brandywine and you, Glenn, and not not the fire. Yeah, company. and I don't know who the check would go to if it comes. Oh. Would it go to the fire department directly, or would it go to West Brandywine? Well, so so what it boils down to is, um, you know, I promised you that I would do some work to get today, to get to today. Um, I did have that discussion with with uh, Joe, and I've also had the uh, discussion with with others to try to um, come up with something that made sense. You you know, again, I'm only one of three, but my thought is to put it in the capital reserve account. It's there. You're good to go, and and we try to um, figure out the logistics of it. You know, later on, but we can. We can discuss this with you guys further. I know you guys want to sit down with us again, and um, you know, I'm happy to do that. But I don't want you guys uncomfortable feeling as though this is getting shifted and shifted and shifted. It's not. Um, we'll certainly, you know, you know, if you said to me today, I need an answer today, we'll give you an answer today. Um, if, if you say, hey, we're good waiting another week or so and sit down with you guys, and, and we'll do that as well. well. Well, I think last year's numbers came at the 23rd hour as to what we were going to be. Um, and I just don't want you guys right to and I and I know that it makes it uncomfortable if I could digress a minute and say to you we've had multiple meetings as a company with Freedom Village without success in regards to funding their their feeling at Freedom Village is that the individual residents of 15 Freedom Boulevard are taxpayers who paid a certain amount of tax who if they pick up the phone and dial 911 why should their service be any different than if someone picked up the phone on 322 and dialed 911 <laughs> And when we met with the management of Freedom Village as a fire company to try and increase funding, that's kind of where we were at and where we were left. Like, these folks own their individual condos. We manage it. Why are they different as a taxpayer and being held to a different standard for taxing it? Because the fire company, just by the grouping of how many people are there, there are going to be more calls. We have more calls than Applecross, but it's a different type of 
people in Applecross, there, but there's certainly more calls there. So should I go to Applecross and say, you owe X number of dollars because we have a higher percentage of calls here. So moving forward, you're, I encourage you to meet with Freedom Village if you can have more success than we have. We certainly haven't and I had know, that kind I of think, success. I think Joe Morrison said that they were actually trying to go to the top, not necessarily at the local level of Freedom Village. Right, that would be Brookdale. Right, right. You know, as to so, um, so, but I, and I'm going to say, I just I want to make it clear because the difference is that you, you don't have somebody in, in Freedom Village. You have a, a management that made a decision that anytime somebody falls or ends up on the ground, they're calling 911, and you guys are going out when it's not a real medical emergency, and that. That is the big difference between your number of calls to Freedom Village and your calls into Applecross. So if I can just speak to that one second, I did meet personally with Freedom Village about that issue. Yeah. Um, Freedom Village is broken into three addresses, 15 Freedom Boulevard, 25 Freedom Boulevard, and 35 Freedom Boulevard. 35 being complete care, 25 being assisted care, 15 is the huge building where you live on your own. Independent. They've tweaked, they've tweaked their uh, policy that 25 and 35 is no longer called for lifting assistance unless the person is in fact injured. So in 25 and 35, they will pick those people up. 15, because the people live independently, is where we will still get a call if someone were to fall. And again, I use the example, just like if the guy down the road fell in his house and just needed lifting assistance. So they have addressed that issue on that side of it. I can't tell you today how many calls have decreased because of that, because I don't have that number in front of me, but I do know that they did address that issue that we would be responding quite a bit because everybody throughout the campus was falling. Well, that's encouraging because what I, I, at least, I don't think any of us were aware that they had changed their policy yeah. and we knew. Uh, anywhere that they provide care, they can now lift the, unless, and I, uh, unless the person's injured. <laughs> Well, and yeah. I understand if they're injured, right. you should go out. But the, the concern was that for the last couple of years, you were going out to lift somebody back up and put them in a wheelchair yeah. that was not really injured. I, I, I had that meeting with them, so I know for a fact I can tell you guys that one. Well, thank you. Thank you. I, like, so, I like your idea. So, so That's not the issue before you. As Jay said, the issue before you is whether you're going to agree to enter this agreement with the formula that West Brandywine has. Mm -hmm committed to and this agreement just so you know it is right now it's set up there is no term it will automatically renew unless one party gives notice um, not later than November 1st so it is multi-year the way it's set up unless one party chooses to get out by November 1 with 3% increase um, so Luke are you gonna are you gonna email So the issue before the board is whether or not you're going to accept the new proposal. Yeah. The, yeah. Other, the other topic you're talking about is the capital reserve. Mm -hmm. So you have two things, I guess, you mm -hmm. want to address. Well, the capital reserves will be second, but I think we need to, as of right now, then I don't think, I think we're going to go back to the table with, with um, I believe, if I'm correct, with Joe. Morris from West Brandon one or are we gonna well not all right so hold on so so the the agreement that's before us today is the one minus the shortfall from 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 West Brandon one correct this the agreement that's before you today proposes at West Brandy one's request to change the funding formula so that the total percentage is if you accept the new formula East Brandy one would pay 60.11 percent of whatever the budget is that you all that you've decided and West Brandywine would pay 36.11 percent and Upper Eugene would pay 3.78 percent and that does not address anything with the with the annual increases correct I don't I don't believe so the, so just so we understand the 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 agreement the way the agreement is structured the fire company comes to the three townships and does a budget presentation we have some budget discussions, and then the three townships agree on how much, uh, uh, basically approve the fire company budget. Once that budget is approved, then the formula 
is applied to the budget and it determines how much each township's contribution would be for the next year. What West Brandywine did was said, here's how much we want to contribute. E e totally irrelevant to the, to the fire company's budget. And then they now want us to change the formula so that the number comes out to what they want to spend, not their fair share as determined by the formula. All right, and so it sounds to me like this formula in, in terms of West Brandywine is, is not working out for them, whether we like it or not. It just, that's the way I'm, I'm getting. Um, this new draft proposal, though, what I'm saying is, was there a deadline for, for this where, where they needed? November 1st is the deadline because I think my understanding of West Brandywine's position is if we don't agree, that, and first of all, this wasn't negotiated. This was just here, right. take it or leave it. Right to us. If we don't agree with their position, they're going to pull out November 1st. I, if, if I could just, uh, I think it's important in, in the interest of, uh, of, of just clarity. Yes, West Brandywine made a presentation regarding their overall outlay for fire services and, and the PowerPoint that we're referring to provides their justifications for a ceiling on what they can provide for fire service. Um, and, and this is a minor point, but I think it's important. The, the particular formula that, that is the, the one that's before you, should you keep the old one or adopt the new one, that formula actually was created at the meeting between East and West. So uh, I, I, that's just a, a minor change to, to the, the groundwork that, that Jay laid. It is correct. They, they, they described a ceiling for their funding, but the formula the actual percentages that we're recalculating here were worked out in the meeting between West Brandywine and East Brandywine. Based on what they wanted to contribute, not based upon any other... But, correct. We used their ceiling as a way to determine the, the, the formula, but it, it, it's the, the draft agreement here was, was hammered out in that meeting. And, it's, and the, the, form, the original formula was created taking into consideration a number of different factors. We, we included fire calls, QRS calls. We included the assessed value of the, the land within the service area. So we didn't look at all of West Brandywine. We only looked at the assessed value of the properties within the area that the fire company serviced. Um, and we looked at the population of each of the townships. And the, we, we discussed at some length why those formulas were important because uh, there was and I, I've said this last time, my original position when we went into those negotiations three years ago or so was it should be totally based on just uh, the operating, uh, the expenses of the fire company. In other words, if they, the number of calls in the different municipalities. But I was convinced that we should include a factor that would um, take into consideration the ability of the township to pay for those. So we, we basically uh, came to a determination that it would be 50-50, 50% based upon the actual number of calls and 50% based on the other factors, assessed value and population. And I think we followed a model in that that's used in West Goshen Township with uh, the, the uh, Fame Fire Company that services West Goshen and I think West Town or some other municipalities. So there was a model here that we that we uh, we could look to. Um, so now for them to come back and say, well, we're going to change the formula or they suggest that it's 80 percent based upon population and assessed value and only 20 percent on the number of calls to me is is arbitrary. So. All right. So so November 1st is is the deadline. Mm -hmm. Our next meeting. Here, here's what I'm thinking. This is multifaceted. The first issue, the shortfall, if, if you ask me right now, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do a capital reserve. Again, we're a board of three, everybody has to vote on it. Regarding the agreement that, that has been changed, um, is there, I, I would assume if we were to sit down with West Brandywine um, and, and Euclid, we would have to have a special meeting, uh, advertise it, and we would have to do this before the uh, next Board of Supervisors meeting. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to meet with all three of them uh, before. Obviously, 
November 1st is our deadline. We have to do this before November uh, Not 1st. necessarily, because if-, if I if, disagree, and what, here's why. If they're threatening to, to pull out November 1st, if there's nothing, I don't want to play that, that, that okay. poker hand. But I don't, what I'm saying is uh, these deadlines, they could agree to extend the deadline oh, yeah, while absolutely. we're meeting, so- I'm And just, I, will, I will speak on behalf of Upper Yukon because I represent them and contacted Kerry Vargo. They have no problem either formula. They're such a small piece of the pie. <coughs> they'll pay. They're, they'll pay what, either under the old formula or under the new formula. They have no. I don't think it's necessary to invite. You can invite them to the meeting. I don't think their board of supervisors. Okay. They, they're going to let. They realize the issue is really between East Brandywine and West Branch. They're going to be three percent or three point one percent. Right. They don't <laughs> care. <laughs> they they Maybe appreciate they can be the fire company. Twenty-eight thousand more percent. <laughs> to pay whichever formula, but. But I think, Kyle, what you could do is, is, and I think that's what we were trying to do from the last meeting, is schedule a special meeting of both boards. It would be a joint meeting. It would only need a sunshine advertisement. It would be a 24-hour notice. And at that meeting, you can hear them out and listen to them and maybe come up to a compromise. I don't think there's going to be any, any much wiggle room from what I've seen from in West Brandywine's point of view. I mean, I think that, you know, although I don't agree with the the way that the formula was changed and working backwards to benefit them I think at the end of the day they were honest about what they what they could spend and due to the nine percent increase in school taxes and um, you know if the formula can be changed I, I don't see it being changed this year I, and I understand that that may be their position is this is how much money you're going to get but to me it's two separate issues we we may be able to work out circumstances where we don't change the formula and they contribute what they're willing to contribute but I I think we need to get to the bottom of the that of, of arriving at a formula that's fundamentally fair based upon logic and reason and not just based upon this is what we want to contribute, so we're going to adjust the formula so that it comes out to that. So you'd rather just keep it the way it is and, and have some kind of... Well, I think there, there are a lot of different ways we can, what do they say, skin the cat? Well, so so the old agreement, their shortfall was 28,000. Well, there's a dispute about that. What, what Luke's numbers say is if we accepted the formula change, our contribution would increase by 40, approximately 40,000. And I think Ken, when Ken, with the last meeting, Ken said he ran numbers and he thinks it's 28,000, but it's somewhere in that range. So um, can, we, can we approve, can we stick to our old agreement with an increase of, uh, of the capital reserve account of $28,000 um, and West Brandywine can do what West Brandywine wants to do uh, well, with their. One way or another, we got to meet with West Brandywine. I think <clears throat> because that's what they asked for. That's West Brandywine. West Brandywine. Yeah. Uh, Kyle, I, I, I spoke. I had the chance to speak with Joe Marsh, and it was certainly not an official. And I know he is open to meeting with you guys. From that end, I know um, the president of our organization, John, has spoke with him because him and Ken are also same way we stand in front of your board, stand in front of their board. And I know that they're, uh, they are willing to meet with you. So if you guys want to get the, both you guys together, then you have a better understanding moving forward, be able to tell us, hey, this is where the money's coming from. This is how you're going to be funded. You know, I just don't want you guys feeling as though we're kicking the can on this. Right. So you have my, again, my personal assurance from me that the shortfall of $28,000 in my, <laughs> my vote would be met on camera yeah. in public. Um, again, um, we'll... We, you know, I still think as soon as we possibly can, if, if, if Kristen's firm could set up between West Brandywine's firm uh, a meeting, uh, I would love to have this resolved before our next uh, supervisor's meeting, and we can do it, um, you know, any early morning or evening and, um, uh, you know, try and get this rectified for these guys. Are you okay with that? I'm, I'm fine with that. I think the fire company would be fine with that. You know, we, we can have someone there, Ken could be there to be concrete numbers instead of, okay. you know, myself, if you give us a, a you know, a far enough head, heads up as to when the meeting will be, well, if I, you want someone there that has the concrete numbers, Ken Eater is the treasurer and the one to provide that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think, okay. We can do that. 
All right, so, and again, I think this needs to be done within the next two weeks, uh, realistically. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I agree with Jay, though, that if you're making progress at this joint yeah. meeting, you could always, the parties could agree to extend the current contract month by month until such time as you negotiate the new contract, so. Well, why don't, why don't like, uh, Luke or myself, we'll just email Joe and, and Carrie and set it up. So yeah, and I just figure with Kristen with legal, at least you have the two, the two solicitors can hash out how and when and, and mediate, so to speak. Okay, thank you, Joe. Thanks. <clears throat> Okay, um, we're gonna we're gonna go to um, uh, to the SPCA 2019 five-year agreement. Scott, the <clears throat> excuse me, the um, this this started back in July with a meeting in West Goshen uh, because several municipalities, including East <coughs> Brandywine, were not happy with the uh, revisions that. Brandywine Valley SPCA had made two previous contracts. Um, this is a longer term agreement than had typically been done. Um, they're uh, asking for a five year agreement, uh, but there were issues such as uh, the request for each municipality to ensure uh, the SPCA, which no one wanted. Um, some of the other um, some of the other issues were um, the termination terms and uh, uh, making sure that the municipalities weren't being double billed for strays that were uh, picked up so that was explained uh, that uh, uh, they do not the SPCA do, does not do that except there is still a charge uh, to the municipalities when um, strays are still picked up. There's still a, uh, I believe it's $109 uh, charge. So uh, the contract that's before you this morning uh, is, has been cleaned up satisfactorily to uh, the majority of those who participated in the first July 10th meeting. Uh, and I know uh, Kristen's office had uh, uh, gone through, made some minor changes and of course made it East Brandywine Township. So the request this morning is for uh, the board to approve this and authorize um, who signs the contract uh, that starts January 1st, 2019. Uh, and the, the uh, as long as we pay the base contract fee by 1-1, we get a discount, a small discount. And that's listed on the first page. I'll make a motion that we approve the Animal Protective Services uh, full service five year contract with the Brandywine, um, Brandywine Valley SPCA and authorize Scott Pearsall to sign on behalf of the township. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, new business. Um, <laughs> this was discussed over 30 days ago. It was just un inadvertently not put in the um, in the agenda for the Downingtown Library discussion. Um, and I think Jack Jack Hines is here. Good morning. Good morning. Appreciate you uh, having us here this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, library services. Uh, Downingtown Library is. Uh, the pardon the interruption, Mr. Hines. We are we are recording. If I could have you speak into oh, the sure. microphone, I'd appreciate that, it. There you go. Thank you. I hate to hide behind things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like to hide, but not behind things. But anyway, uh, the Downingtown Library is the library that serves East Brandywine Township. We serve a number of other municipalities. And uh, oh. the library, as you well know, moved into new facilities about three years ago, uh, 2015. Uh, just to give you some idea of what's happening with the library, to this time, in two, this time of the year, in 2015, we saw about 53,000 patrons come through our doors. In 2018, at this time, this year, 
We've had over 70,000 patrons come through the doors. The library is being utilized very heavily. Uh, we've had a wonderful success in our new facilities. Uh, that brings us to why we're coming to each municipality and talking to you. Uh, one of the things that's happened is our costs have increased. And we have a wonderful facility. In fact, it's, it's, it's being utilized to, to the fullest. I mean, we, we, we have to talk about what our future is very soon. soon. And it's going to be more than what we are. Uh, it's, just, it's just amazing. And I might mention that in, in East Brandywine, uh, your folks are well read. Uh, the, the municipality with the most number of books that are taken out from the library is East Brandywine. So you have a good populace, they're well informed. So uh, it brings us to where, where we are. For the last couple of years in the new library, we have uh, been have had a negative budget. We've been utilizing our savings to balance our budget on an annual basis. That can't continue. In fact, we only have, if we continue the way we are, we have about two years left of savings that uh, we'd be have to change our business. We're open uh, seven days a week. Seven days, yeah, six days a week. We're not open Sunday. Yeah, sorry. Uh, but it, it's it's there's a lot of great things going on at the library, and the library is a basic service of a community very similar to your fire department you're just talking with those folks uh, we don't want to diminish what they do and, and, and the bravery we don't have people you know running into burning buildings at the library but our folks do provide a <laughs> necessary service to the community and it's done by volunteers I have members of the board here with me we have uh, our executive director our director uh, Elizabeth Hess and the other folks that are on the board and in fact we have two ladies here that are representatives from the community uh, on our library board. So they come with, with me today and appreciate that. What we're asking each municipality to do is to increase their donation and we're asking uh, that each municipality provide at least three dollars per capita on an annual budget basis. That's less than a penny a day uh, for library services per capita and we're not asking you to jump into that immediately. We're asking you to consider what you're now providing to the library and then over time have as a goal that you get to that, uh, that amount. So, you know, whatever you can do to increase your, your amount to the library, we certainly appreciate. Uh, it, it's, it's very important that we close our budget gap with, uh, so that we're not depending on our, our reserves. Uh, because, you know, with a building and so forth, you know, all know how that comes about. We need, may need to do some repairs or anything in the future, and, and we deplete our reserves will be in bad shape. So the, the library is an essential service, and we need funding. Uh, we appreciate we've gone to every municipality um, and asked them to do the same. And uh, uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm also a supervisor in West Bradford. Uh, so uh, I made sure that our budget is, is getting adjusted. And uh, we've, we've actually gone towards this goal for several years now, and we've increased our budget by 5 or 10% a year uh, just to meet that goal. And, and uh, uh, we're willing to take a big jump at this point, and uh, we'll have our budget work session next week. So uh, I'm willing to answer any questions you may have. Uh, and, uh, you know, we really appreciate you. Uh, listening to us, and uh, and also uh, before I forget, if you don't mind, uh, after this presentation, some of our members we may leave, meaning we don't mean anything by that, but uh, we have some things to do. So, but so I'm willing to answer any questions you have, uh, and I'm willing to bring a big truck up to put money in it if you'd like to help. Uh, help the fund the library. <laughs> Is that a West Bradford dump truck? Sure. <laughs> we have some big ones. <laughs> so, you know, just so it's not one of their trash trucks. Yeah. Um, Jack, yeah. how does the, the three dollars per capita relate to what we're contributing at this point? You know, um, I'm, I'm not sure what exactly your population is at this point, but um, I, I can answer that question. Um, so this is this would be a, a new request, so it hasn't gone through our budget committee, but I can provide a little bit of background. Um, bear with me. I'm also controlling the cameras, so I've always got a multitask here. 
Um, so the, the, the 2018 contribution to the, to the, um, to the library district was $6,200. If you assume our 2010 population of 6,762 people, the, the new contribution would be $20,286. That's exactly what I was going to say. That's a, uh, the number. Uh, Twenty thousand was the number I wrote down, so that's about where I where I thought we'd be with the three per three many, dollars per capita. How many years did it take you to work up to that, or you know, you said five to ten percent increase uh, per year? It, it's up to you. I mean, you, you, I, I understand your budget issues, and, and you know, it, it's we're all in the same boat. So you know, you can increase it on, on a percentage basis, or if you can make a big jump, you know, we appreciate whatever you can do. So. I'm, I'm just saying that in, for a couple of years, West Bradford is using a 5% figure, but uh, right now we're looking at trying to get all the way up to the, uh, actually looking at a couple of things. I, I've, uh, the board doesn't know this, but I've suggested to them that they fund a, uh, we have a children's library that's very, very busy and it's a part-time position. I've asked Elizabeth what it would take to bring that up to a full-time position we may consider up to $12,000 to increase the service of that position as well as our normal donation, but, and, and we're also considering going to the actual $3 per capita, so, yeah. We can uh, put it, get it into the budget committee. We're actually, just, just to finish the, where we are, <coughs> we're, we're at about $2 per capita right now. Uh -huh. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Subdivision zoning application. I'm sorry. Um, we we have the budget committee request for for direction. Uh, Mr. Sherbeck. Good morning. George Sherbeck, 300 South Caldwell Circle. Uh, I'm a member of the budget committee, and um, we've already met twice. And after meeting twice, we have some questions that we'd like to address. Some can, you can give us an immediate answer. Others you may want to think about and say. First thing is we haven't heard from the township manager on the board as to whether there are any items, new positions, new systems, new expenses that should be included in the budget. So anything that you guys plan on doing for 2019 that is not in existence now we need to know about that so we can you know put that into our budget process. let's do each one individually if that's okay that way we can get you your answers immediately okay. um, as best as we possibly that was question one right that's question okay. one i would say we had our um our uh, comprehensive plan done and um there was numerous suggestions made in that in that study, um, and I would say that the board, um, you know, just I, th I think we're getting ready to release it um, um, publicly. Um, we've had a chance to read through it, and I would say, um, me personally, I think there's at least two of the immediate. Um, I want, let's just call it 15 suggestions right. um, that the board would need to act upon for 2019. Okay. Um, that being said, um, we would have to um, discuss it in, mm -hmm. in, in a public meeting and, and you know give our feedback on that. Okay. But I, I would say, why don't we put that as an agenda item for uh, the next meeting, maybe, Mary, that <coughs> we can talk about, uh, because that way everybody will already have the, the plan at that point. It's, it's public, okay. and okay. we can, if, if the, if the um, residents have feedback and they want to, uh, they differ from what our opinion is, what should be first in priority, then we can address it in the public meeting. Okay. So we'll put that for agenda for next next meeting. Okay. <laughs> Number two, um, there is a fund called Open Space Parks and Recreation, um, which is set up for improvements to our park system and whatever else it may. I think the fund uh, apparently has somewhere in the area of 700000 It's the opinion of our committee that we feel that the Bondsville Mill Project, which their initial re their request this year is for 148000 and perhaps other recreational line items 
would be better served and more appropriately paid for out of this fund rather than the general fund? Um, and that would be more of a legal question. I don't see a problem with it. Yeah, we started to look at that yesterday, but I wanted to look at it a little bit more in detail okay. and report back. It seems but, like that should be. So it's. Seems, seems like likely that should, work. That should yeah. work. Likely that should work, but I want to look at it a little more carefully. Okay, great, great. Third is we've started to delve into the capital reserve funds of the township, police, and public works. Um, I think in the past, and Lou, correct me if I'm wrong, money gets into those funds at the end of the year if there is a surplus to the general uh, general fund. I don't know how they're allocated into each of the three <coughs> funds, but that's what I believe the process is. We've been talking about whether do you continue that process or would it be nice from an accounting standpoint to plug in line items for transfers into these three funds based on the request of these three, you know, these three departments. Um, basically, uh, Public Works has asked for 400000 this initial request, for um, to go into that fund. Police Department has asked for 150000 And the township hasn't asked for anything. Um, in fact, nothing has gone into that fund since 2015, at least, if not prior. And that fund is dangerously low. That's down to about 25000 we have a 13-year-old building. Um, 25,000 is not going to take care of repairs, roofs, etc. So, even though nothing was requested, um, I would think our committee probably is going to say it'd be nice to get some, get a transfer into that fund as well. Um, so that that totals about fi you know 550,000. Um, some of these funds are getting somewhat not dangerously low, but they're getting low and there strictly is a need to start beefing up some of these funds, particularly with the plans of uh, paving and stuff going next year. I believe there's two, two, pro, uh, two line items of 950000 that Public Works wants to address next year at least. Um, and I think right now they have half a million in their fund. So police department is, is, is I think adequate right now is, is satisfactory, at least in my opinion, may not, chief may not agree. But the question is, one is, do you, would you like to see us put that in as a line item rather than not show it and at the end of the year just decide what's left in the pot and you guys decide where it gets allocated? So that's one question. Do you want to see a formal light, uh, line item in the budget? Two would be if we go with what is requested, 400, 150, and perhaps putting in whatever, 50 or 100 for township, it's going to be hard to find that. Somehow in the past, it looks like money's been found, which I'm assuming we either just didn't spend or we over budgeted. Um, so is there, could there be a possibility of a tax increase? I don't know if you guys have talked about that yet, but that was something that would help fund those, um, those fund transfers if we stay with what has been requested. Yeah, I'll be honest. Uh, there's been no discussion, at least that I've been privy to, about a tax increase. Um, um, I will say, you know, our, our tax collector um, is bringing in, you know, Darn near 100%, um, and we do have several new developments coming, which will help. But to to your point of the township having a capital reserve account, I, I agree. Um, I mean, we we are running into a problem this very minute with with uh, heating and air conditioning. So yeah, there's there's definitely a need for right. for that. So um, and I think, I think we have the capital reserve. Right. It, it, the issue is we haven't had a line item contribution sure. to the capital right. reserve. Right. Do you want it? Do you want us to show it as a line item? I, I think my personal opinion is that your committee should, we, we've entrusted you with making a recommendation on the budget. So right. I think you ought to make the recommendation okay. that you think is most appropriate 
and it's to me it's a little difficult to say we should do this over here and this over here i'd like to see the entire picture at one time and then okay. we can decide i mean then then we can see <coughs> how much you're allocating what the ramifications are of it and so forth so and obviously the best part of this is you guys are residents right so um you you have full access and and know where it's needed right. um and and i i appreciate that and, okay. and we selected you guys because you have the people on the committee that have the background that hopefully can right. make some meaningful meaningful rec recommendations okay thank you thank you thank you um analysis of pa house bill 25 six i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm, I'm going to pig, piggyback on uh, george um, for the budget committee um i i think um using the uh, fee in lieu of uh open space funds is a terrific idea for bonson mill park and uh, i i support that i've i've come to provide you uh, some insight on what our plans are for the park and uh, what our budget is for uh, 2019. Um, in your packets, I've uh, provided uh, the 2019 budget request for the park, um, a summary of our accomplishments and our plans for the park, and a summary of the grants and donations uh, to the park uh, development. Um, our plan focus uh, for 2019 uh, will be in two areas. And that is uh, to continue the uh, work on the rehabilitation of Building C and uh, to uh, develop the horticultural and event area uh, in front of the mill buildings. Um, each of these uh, is important. Uh, it's important to put energy into each of these areas uh, for uh, their own reasons. Um, David Culp, who uh, is an internationally renowned horticulturalist and a resident of our township, uh, is leading the effort uh, to uh, develop the horticultural area and uh, is enthusiastically uh, putting energy into developing plans for that area now. Um, we're, we're in the process of, uh, of using his time for that. Uh, David uh, Hud and I um, plan to visit you next month to give you um, some more in-depth insight as to exactly what David's vision is for that. Um, the, um, the planning events geared towards making the horticultural community aware of this uh, feature of the park to garner support for its development is a, is a big plus uh, to this. So he's putting energy into that now. We're going to have events this fall to begin to bring people in David Culp's network out to the park to see what we're doing and to start to generate in interest in looking forward in, in getting your support uh, for, for developing that. Um, the horticultural area will become uh, the third major component of the park and a destination it's, uh, in its own right. And we envision a, a, a small, you know, envision a small Longwood Gardens type park uh, with elements from the uh, New York City High Line. Um, and um, it will uh, draw an additional community to the park and to the township. So we'll be bringing people in the, into the uh, township from outside the area that will help help to feed the businesses and um, it'll be an area for events that will generate income for the township uh, events such as weddings uh, uh, music festivals uh, craft festivals that kind of thing uh, the sooner uh, we develop the horticultural area the sooner the township can realize the benefits uh, of its use for events and for donations that can come from the affluent members of the horticultural community also, um, we have the key person with the connections into the horticultural community to lead up this effort, and that's, that's David Culp. Regarding Building C, um, this work is being done by a core volunteer to have the necessarily, necessary um, specialized skill set. Um, the work that they've been doing on Building A speaks for itself, and we can look forward to a similar result um, for Building C. We need to realize and keep in mind that the uh, financial value of what they are giving to this project, uh, beyond the donation of time, it should be realized that they're renovating these buildings at an estimated cost of about $25 per square foot. Uh, and you know, as compared to um, Ritu's estimate in $2010 of $150 per square foot. So it's a huge huge benefit. Um, and keep in mind also that the donations 
uh, that I presented in the grants and donations summary are conservative. Um, the volunteer hours presented in the summary there are 2,354 hours, uh, but uh, we've only been documenting uh, man hours uh, since the June of 2017. So since the June of 2017 through September 2018, that's uh, 2,354 hours, uh, man hours um, con contributed. And I've uh, estimated a conservative wage of $20 per hour. Skilled labor is going to be considerably higher than that. So uh, I, I think the number in um, the um, donations summary is $47. Thousand dollars. Forty-seven thousand dollars. That's that's conservatively low. So you know, for about a um, year and a half, um, forty-seven thousand dollars in labor. Um, you know, and, and it's important to keep these volunteers involved. You know, they're enthusiastic. They're out there. They're getting the work done at a, at a, um, a huge savings to the township. And uh, we're concerned that if the work falls off too much there, <coughs> that uh, we'll lose them to, to other projects. So um, the other thing I wanted to point out is that awareness of the park has grown exponentially over the last several years. Uh, and that's through events uh, such as Chester County Day, uh, the county's uh, town tours program, and through service projects such um, uh, projects for the Boy Scouts, the Girl Scouts, uh, the Chester County Intermediate Unit just uh, did a project out there, and the networking that occurs through those organizations that bring awareness to the park. Uh, activities like um, we had a movie that was sh uh, shot at the park um, uh, last month, um, and that movie is associated with um, Provident Church in Westchester, which has a huge congregation. Again, awareness and networking. Uh, and uh, we have a photo shoot um, this Saturday uh, with Chester County Camera Club is going to be out there. Um, and there's several geocaching sites out there. Uh, geocachers come out and use the site. Um, so, and and the, the future development of the horticultural area and the events uh, that will happen there will also generate more interest. So development of the park has been performed and managed in an efficient way and provides great benefit to the township and the region around it. Uh, and it's anticipated the final cost will be far below that spent on the community park for the development costs. And um, I think that the uh, budget request for 2019 is merited uh, based on these points. And the approach of using open space funds allows support of the project in a way that's not competitive with the other needs of the township. So again, I wholly support that. Um, and if you have any questions for me, I'm happy to answer them now. Um, <laughs> we'll be back uh, next month as well. Where are you at with your budget this year as far as um, funds? Uh, we're, we're asking for $148,000. No. no, I mean, like, I'm, I'm sorry, for last year's. Where are you uh, last year? 2018, current, yes. is, I think, is as uh, We've spent um, a little over $100,000, maybe $110,000. But um, there's quite a bit of materials that we're going to be purchasing yet. Mm -hmm. I, I uh, have um, discussed this with Rocky over the last couple of meetings, and he thinks it's going to be fairly close. We may have some money left over, but um, I think it's going to be fairly close uh, to spending a good deal of what's left. And you know, we've got to keep in mind also that we got a late start this year. Um, we, we had to um, bid out the material costs for the park. And in waiting for the, those bids to be settled, um, we really didn't get start, started in earnest on the actual construction work and spending the, uh, the 2018 budget until around uh, late April, May. Okay. So. I remember. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, now we're going to move on to the analysis of the PA House Bill 2564 Small Wireless Facilities Deployment Bill. Uh, Dan Cohen, uh, <coughs> Cohen Law Group out in Pittsburgh, uh, contacted me uh, last Wednesday to discuss this bill. Uh, I was aware of the bill, but not aware of some of the intricacies of the bill. Uh, he's looking for municipalities to uh, contact their legislators about the bill because it would be, uh, in, in his mind, and I have to agree with him, detrimental to 
uh, municipalities to deal with these uh, small wireless companies that come in and install um, their facilities on existing utility poles. Uh, we currently get income from cable TV, for example, Comcast and Verizon. In this case, the, um, the small wireless companies have uh, formed a coalition and are uh, and have gotten their foot in the door with uh, Representative Frank Ferry, who, um, along with 34 other co-sponsors, uh, has put this bill out there, which essentially there's three things of concern. Number one, it would strip the municipalities of their zoning authority in dealing with um, these types of facilities. They wouldn't be subject to zoning review, uh, where today, uh, if you remember earlier the, in the year, we had a wireless company that wanted to install a facility on uh, one of our properties in um, along Creek Road. Uh, I haven't heard back from them uh, yet, but there would be uh, income coming from that, and there should be income coming from um, these facilities too, even though they're in or because they're in the right of way. Uh, we do that for cable TV, we do that for w other wireless facilities, and it also shortens the review process um, for any uh, construction permits. So I'm asking the board for their uh, approval of me contacting uh, Representative Corbin and Senator Rafferty and ask for their support in saying no to this bill as it currently exists. Um, well, I, I, I did take the time to pull up the actual bill and take a look at it, and I was surprised that uh, there are a number of Chester County legislators, not Becky Corbin, but I think Eric Rowe and there were a couple of other ones who have, are actually co-sponsors of this. So um, I would make a motion that we authorize Scott to write a letter asking our legislators to oppose uh, House Bill 2564, but I think it should be sent to all the entire Chester County delegation, not just okay. to Becky Corbin and John Rafferty. Um, all right, so you say, say the last part of it again. You're recommending that we send it to the entire Chester County delegation, all the legislators. Oh, okay, okay, of okay. County. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Although I think we got to recognize that. That uh, uh, I, I was interested on that next door neighbor or neighbor website. There's, there's a woman who posted that she's going offline. She's going to stream everything, and that's the wave of the future. So our cable revenues are going to be declining as more and more people decide to go to Hulu and Amazon Prime and those those kinds of uh, uh, <coughs> sources for um, content. But did Dan Cohen indicate whether he thought the bill would pass? He did not. He's he's hoping it doesn't, but he felt that a grassroots campaign, I believe this is due. Well, it's not pending in front of the legislature at this point. But it's is still it? in committee. <coughs> okay. It's the, the, the first vote is to vote it out of committee. Okay. And that's supposed to happen by October 9th, I think. Yes. So. Um, I didn't understand that part. Yeah. I thought there was a vote on it in the uh, House of Representatives then, but it's no. just coming out of committee. Okay. But uh, so if, you, if you kill it in committee, you're much better off than trying to fight it on the But floor. that's important that you raise that because October 9th is next yeah. week. So <laughs> I guess that's a priority. Yeah. Okay. Did they provide, did Dan provide a letter? Hey, they typically do provide a letter for he, you. He did not, but I'll contact him today yeah, and ask for it. Well, he, he provided a memo. I think it'd be pretty easy. Oh, uh, yeah. If, if Scott, okay. if you want help putting the letter together, I'll be happy to do that. But Okay. Okay, subdivisioning zoning applications, uh, FASL PRD application. Uh, <clears throat> FASL, by the way. FASL. Um, <laughs> you haven't been here long enough to know that. Uh, Rana Golnick uh, is 
still working as an attorney. I think he's <laughs> – never mind. I'm not going to go there. Um, but he represented uh, the Faisal organization. It was the father um, – in the, in the early 80s, before the Board of Supervisors with a planned residential development, or PRD, of the Timbers development off of North Guthriesville Road. Uh, the current owners of uh, one of the properties there, uh, Karen and James Faisal Jr., uh, own a, uh, basically it's a barn that was on the property was originally a, a uh, nut tree farm and they want to subdivide the property or this this parcel uh, currently the barn serves as a two unit apartment building uh, they want to subdivide it into two separate units that could be sold separately so um, Kristen and I uh, discussed this initially Kristen and I both met with Rana Golnick and suggested that the proper way to uh, file the applications would be to start with an application before the Board of Supervisors to amend the PRD plan. And we've done this before, um, but not with Timbers. Uh, and um, Kristen has in your packet a letter to uh, Mr. Golnick explaining the process. He wanted to run both the uh, PRD amendment and the subdivision <coughs> process uh, in parallel, and Kristen recommended against this. So basically what I'm doing is to introduce this to the board and ask that um, uh, you allow Kristen to advertise the hearing, the public hearing for this uh, PRD amendment for the, the November 1st uh, Board of Supervisors work session. Now I'll jump in. The PRD is a little bit different. It's, it's a section of the municipality's planning code. It sort of combines zoning and subdivision into one. And so when this development was approved as a PRD, this particular barn was already on the property and it was approved to be converted into four units, two down below and two above. For whatever reason, the Fazles only developed it with two units side by side, similar to an attached dwelling. And they've continued to own it and they rent out each of the units. They'd like to be able to like, divest themselves of both units and they realize it's gonna be easier for them to sell it to the existing tenants if they're two separate units. So it's, tech, I mean, it seems like not a big deal and Mr. Ogolnik first tried to come in and say, oh, come on, let me just do a subdivision. But when we went back and looked at how it was originally approved under the MPC, it's technically an amendment to the final PRD approval which under the MPC requires you to go back to the Board of Supervisors and hold a public hearing, advertise it two times like we do for conditional uses, but it's really a very limited scope that what you're going to be discussing at a public hearing is just are you willing to let them basically what is already a party wall but currently owned as one building, let it be owned as two different separate structures. So pretty, pretty narrow scope and unfortunately it does require this public hearing process. But if the board's comfortable with that, you could approve the amendment to the final PRD. They would then file a subdivision application and go through that process. The tricky thing is, is that it's not, they're not gonna be following your today's subdivision ordinance because when you do a PRD, that includes under one ordinance, the zoning and the subdivision. So again, that's gonna be a pretty streamlined process as well. And the complication is that we eliminate the PRD provisions in our ordinance. So, so you're going back and looking at the old <laughs> What was the ordinance in effect back in the 80s, I guess, which you do 89. have? 89. Yeah, 89. You have, yes. Yeah. The 89 ordinance. You so do you think we need a motion to do that? Just to schedule the hearing Just for November 1. All right, I make a motion that we authorize Kristen to advertise <coughs> a um, hearing for the board's November 1st work session to consider an amendment to the PRD um, plan for 434 Timber Pass. And I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Public comment on agenda items. And actually, before you talk, uh, Mr. Kampaski, I just had a idea and I mentioned it to Luke during the meeting. Again, I don't know why I'm bringing this up again, but just for my own sake of sanity, 
what you gave to me is still in my personal possession, 100% certainty. What I believe is you put it on the table and we videotaped it, and I guarantee you, if you match frame by frame to that video, you're gonna find exactly what you found in another legal law firm's possession. But I, it dawned on me, I asked Luke if that was possible, and he said, absolutely. So That's a possibility, but I presented about six or seven photos know, on the table, I, and then I also argued with about Scott because he said he wasn't able to zoom in. Remember that conversation? Yeah, but I just, it, it came to, came to Mind. Well, here's another thought that I also had while sitting here. If you've had it in your <coughs> locker for the last several months, what have you done with the photo? We, Being my my supervisor. I can't talk about it in public meetings. I, I'm sorry, I can't talk about it in private meetings, so it would have to get talked about in a public meeting, and you haven't brought Talking about it right now, I gave you the picture in March that has everything to do with breaking of the NPDES, the best water management practices. Oh, gosh, DEP says you're absolutely responsible for 50 feet off the bank up to the road. They lied on the PUC application. They lied about availability of water not being within a mile. My name was misrecorded on my deed. My property was added an acre this year, mysteriously. I have three different boundaries on my property line. My waterfront property was absorbed by the township. The parcel to the next of mine says 7.7, 7.63, and 7.1. I have three different areas for the land that you guys inherited on March 31st, 2017 for a dollar. So again, how did you get 7.7 .7 acres of commercial waterfront property in Downingtown school districts for a dollar? I'll have to leave from that to two, leave. From two people, the president of the company went to prison for 15 months for pipeline fraud. The vice president got convicted for pipeline fraud in SEPTA, and the third in command quit on the project. Now I give my supervisor that, that was strategy, Kyle. The FBI told me to come here to develop evidence. I went and got the picture so I would have proof. I got an unusual size so I had proof. I got a receipt and I went to Kinko's so I had a paper trail and I gave it to you on camera so I could see all this go down. Okay, so uh, with regards to everything, I can't answer everything right now. I can That's tell fine. You I why. wasn't getting up for that anyway. I know exactly where you stand, where you stand, and where he stands, okay. and you will. Okay. As you can see, experience. Some it. people were born with fear. I wasn't. I'm good to go. I'm glad you're not scared. So thank you. I appreciate it. And well, I'm glad I addressed your question, but I had a question. I believe it's uh, <coughs> section 1301 of Class Two Municipal Code the position of township manager can be created or dissolved at any point in time. And I've been at every single one of these meetings and Scott can't even keep his eyes open. He's been questioned for theft of fuel. Meanwhile, Luke is extremely on the ball. Every single topic comes up, he's completely knowledgeable, completely knows absolutely every facet of the topic. And why? Is Scott still here? All right. So what, if what the is police agenda, department needs agenda, extra money, why are we paying him 120 grand a year to fall asleep? Your agenda question. It's about the budget. Okay. Let's stick to the budget. And not okay. The staff. Can we dissolve the position of township manager based on all of the request of the constituents and the sixty-one thousand dollars that you spent our money on for a self-audit with Ray Halverson, who created? his own entity in January of this year. So you guys paid $61,000 to a business that was in business for six weeks, and we still don't have the answer. Okay, so your agenda question, can you, can you dissolve a, a township manager's uh, position? So One, two, three. Do you want an answer to your question? So you would have to bring that to the budget committee, the budget committee would then bring it to us. So I think that answers your agenda question. Okay. So, so this is where that's going. So, I try not to bankrupt this township. Okay. I try to be cool. I try to show all the facts. I have I keep telling you, I have a security camera that's been on my house for five years. I have everything. So whatever. You're just you burn the building down. Um, any other public comments on agenda items? Seeing none. Um, I have a couple of things I want to talk about though that weren't um, Back in July 20th, 
I had um, wrote email to our township manager uh, requesting some information on the use of open space funds and I have not had an, uh, an answer yet and I emailed last Wednesday as a follow-up and I still have I haven't received a response so I don't know at this point I don't know if I don't, I don't understand uh, Jason, I don't, I this can, is obstruction and do I have to do a right to know request no can I jump in for a second I had asked Mr. Pearsall when you had sent the email I had asked him to put together a detailed memo that explained the various transfers that were made the resolutions that the prior boards of supervisors adopted and approved there are th two or three different memorandums from the prior secretary treasurer Mary Beth Smedley that outline exactly what was done based on the resolutions adopted by the board and I'd asked Mr. Pearsall to go back and provide the, the actual um, balance statements from the bank accounts that showed the money coming out from the open space fund being transferred into the general fund and then from the general fund back and I ha it is the, the delay is on my part. I'm, I want it to be presented to the board in one document with everything attached to make it very easy to understand. I was having a hard time understanding the, the bank account statements just because I don't read those frequently. And I have two questions to ask Mr. Pearsall, which I was hoping to do after this meeting. And then we, he was going, it was a memo from him. It's not from me, but I, it was at my suggestion that it go back so that because it had been raised as a question, and I think it needs to be put to rest, so to speak, and the board needs to see that whatever was done was done by prior authorization of the Board of Supervisors, and the money that was borrowed from the open space to the general fund went back into the open space fund consistent with the resolutions that were passed with interest. So he has provided that to me. Part of it was that when he was away, I was reviewing the documents and didn't have a chance to cl get clarity on the two questions that I do have. Is it? I mean, because I already provided the, the resolutions and a chart, I just needed to have verification. And were you? Is this back in July or is this now? No, the, the, I've been looking at it. It was not last week, but the week prior to that. And because Mr. Pearsall was away, I didn't have a chance. I have to sit down with him with the actual bank statements on my two questions. Well, you know, I had I'd spoken to a CPA, and I was hoping that the board would. Be okay with spending five thousand dollars to have a uh, accountant come in and, and take a look at the books. He said that it would be a maximum of five thousand dollars. I think uh, it, I would ask that if you wait to get the memo that I'm speaking of, because I think that will clarify your issues. And if, I mean, if, if, if after receiving that you're not satisfied, I but mean, I will say that I, I mean, what what was done was done with authority of the board of supervisors, and that was I understand the that, actions not, were consistent with what the board of supervisors had asked. But for. it's not permitted though. Well, I don't, I'm not sure that's, I don't, I don't think that's 100% accurate. I mean, I think. Second class township code, it's not permitted, it's special funds. It, it, you can't spend the funds and the money's Only was on that, only on, on open space. And it was transferred to the general funds and disappeared. So I, honestly, I'm not really, the, what happened happened. I'm fine with that, I think. But I just want to make sure that it, it got back in there and it appears that it hasn't. And I don't know. I think it has. I think it has. We're trying to provide you the documentation of that. But why can't you email me and say, hey, Jason, you know, you're not being ignored again and we're looking into it. You know, maybe Mr. Pearsall could email me and say, I'm really swamped right now. Give me another week. But the, the lack of response at all, I mean, is, is just mind boggling to me. And sure. it's, it's not the kind of uh, response that I would accept from my employees. Um, so anyway, I'm moving forward. So how about I'd be even willing to pay for the audit myself if, if that's okay with the board? Would, would, that, would you guys have an issue? He did not. Yeah, I don't we have an independent auditor that we uh, we voted in just, just this year or last year that would be? I don't think you need an audit. I think if, again, if, if, if you could wait till, hopefully I'll have a chance to speak with them today you'll get the memo if after you receive the memo you're not satisfied that the money went back into the proper fund then obviously you have the you can do whatever well, you want I but, understand, but I, I think you'll I think you'll find that those funds all went back to where they were supposed to go with the interest that was required by the resolutions okay but I would still prefer that I'm willing to bear the cost myself and have an audit come in because I'm not satisfied with a lot of things and 
I think that in in order for me to put my mind at rest, Fine. I think that can't uh, stop you from doing that. Yeah, yeah. And I don't have a, I don't have a, if you want to spend personal money to do it, I don't have a problem with it. I can't justify spending taxpayers' money on an audit for one that we do have an impartial audit every year done. Um, that's my you know thought process behind it. But obviously, you're entitled to. Um, um, my wife's not gonna be happy, but um, you know, but it'll make me put my mind at ease and, um, and um, so. So I, I guess we'll leave it as Kristen just said that she'll have um, you know an answer in the next. Uh, yeah, it's it's not a memo from me. It's a memo from Scott explaining it. But I just wanted to make sure. I I think it's it could. Have, I was trying to. I, I suggested that it be presented to you in a very orderly fashion so that you ha you know you can follow the trail. Here's the resolution. Here's the funds that were transferred. Here's the bank statements that go to show that the money went into the general fund and came back into the open space fund. I guess if you're not happy with that, then. Okay, I'm okay. I'll, I'll I'll table that till October's meeting. As far as um, uh, Kristen, back on uh, you had asked Mr. Pearsall on August seventh about some email requests that I have been waiting for, and I never received a response from Scott on those emails. Um, I have a list of emails that I have provided and circled the ones that I have not received. And for I, from what I understand from Mike Galley, our uh, one attorney, that uh, I'd, I'd wanted to know from him back in July if I could, do I have the authority to go into the manager's office and get on his server and look through the emails myself? And he says, given that all the manager's emails are public record, I would suspect that you have a right to view those emails generally. Mm -hmm. So. I'd like to have Luke take me in the office directly following this meeting, and I can um, get search for my missing emails. So, and that's a board decision. Do you have any issues with that, or Jay or Kyle? I, I, I my concern would only be legal. That that's my only concern. If it's not a legal issue, and I don't know if one uh, attorney can make that decision, but that's that's my, uh, you know, I wouldn't. If one attorney said yes, it's legal, and one says no, it's not illegal, then there's ambiguity. So that would be my only problem, um, me personally. I mean, well, I think you. I know that, and I don't. I, I'm not. I don't know what emails you're asking for, Jason. I know that there. I've emailed them to everyone. I know that you did. I know that you you made a request, and I actually spent about two or two and a half hours at that workstation where you, you normally access the server, pulling up all of the emails I could find. Luke went through the process, showed me where they were on the server, and um, I don't know if this is related to that request or not, or that search. Um, there were some, if I recall correctly, there was a list of, of what you wanted and some of them I couldn't find. I don't know, my understanding, Luke can correct me if I'm wrong, is what, when you, it, it shouldn't matter where you access the server. If you, if you access that at that extra workstation where we all have access to it, or if you go into Scott's office, you're, as, you're accessing the same digital files. So I don't understand why you think you need to go into Scott's office to access them. Had to be at that workstation unless if he wasn't copied. That's that was but my impression. I think they're all I, I, saved onto the, the the township server. I, I I can clarify this because yes, it uh, my explanation to Jason and the process you performed are, are different, and so I'll just clarify that so you're not talking past each other. When um, an email is received. Um, the the Outlook installed on a given workstation does a send and receive and deletes that email off of the server and it appears on the local workstation. That local workstation um, is is uh, obviously so if that machine were to crash then you would lose the local copy. So it is backed up to the server. 
the, the reason why you would want to be at an individual workstation is because that workstation has indexed those emails and they're therefore searchable. Is, is that clear? So what, uh, what you're referring to is, is, is a query of an older PST file that you did. I believe you had a range of dates. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so the workstation you were at would not have been live copies. It was archived. It was an archive, exactly. So, so what you were querying was, a, was an old PST file, and that, that PST file is what Outlook creates. So it, it's, it is fair to say that, that copies of emails exist on the local machine and on our tape backup and the local, and uh, you know, it's backed up to um, our, our network. But a search would not function at any given workstation. So that's why the two of you are, are talking past each other. A, so A search would not function? So for example, if, if we wanted to set Jason up at a workstation that was not Scott's desk in order to query emails, we would need to copy all the PSTs from Scott's local machine to a different machine and then run an index. And given the hundreds of gigabytes that is, that machine would probably take two days to run the index. But it could be arranged. Jason, I would prefer just to do it right at this meeting and, and at least sit with Jason at his desk and touch but, but I think the, the, the explanation that Luke's giving us, so what's the time period for these emails, Jason? I don't, I don't know. I'm just um, from, from 15 till present. Yeah, 15, 2015 till present. So, um, you know, it's, it's all public knowledge. I, I don't really... W would you need to run a query to find things, or would you just scroll through things to find something? I'd probably... I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure. Probably easier if I just... So, so sure. in terms of what I could deliver to you at a, new, at a workstation that isn't Scott's office, I could quickly deliver to you the ability to scroll through. I could not quickly deliver to you the ability to query. I prefer just to just sit in his office and... Mm -hmm. right. No talking out, please. This, we do have a meeting to run, and I've been very cordial, but and not just you, everybody. It, with interrupting, we can't have it. it it's not professional. It's, this is our work time, and we have to discuss it up here in public. So, so, all right, devil's advocate. Um, I, I have no problem with, 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 with doing this. However, I don't, I don't think it should be in, um, you know, I'll just go into somebody's office and sit there for as long as I want to, just out of respect. Yeah, it's a policy decision for the board as to whether or not you want to respect privacy of your employees, or do you as a board, what Mr. Gailey said is, accurate, is that totally accurate. There's no disagreement on that. You as the Board of Supervisors run the show. You get to decide. You are Scott's boss. Scott's computer is not Scott's computer. Scott's computer is a township computer that the Board of Supervisors delegates and gives him the right to use. Just like Mary has a computer, the Chief has a computer. So whether or not you as a board think that it's appropriate for, not, for any, one of the, any one of you board members to go into his office and just look through whatever you want Whenever you want. I'm, I'm just not, saying this, not, this could be taken not, to the extreme, you're, you're Jason. Contact, you're taking... No, bit, yeah, I'm saying it's a board decision as to what you want then to allow about this? Then I'll make, board I'll, to go to another employee. I'm not saying it's a bad... It's, <coughs> it's your call. That's all. How about this? Um, I would just like how to about this? sit in his office for, and look for the emails that I requested three months ago. I'd like to look at his server, not his desks, uh, you know, not his files. I res I'm not... You know, if this isn't going to be a reoccurring event, uh, you know, I don't think anyone else has to worry about it. But if, if I'm being lied to, go with if I'm being lied to, then I think that uh, I have that every right. Suggestion. Is to have Jason and Luke get a time convenient for Scott when he's not going to be working at his desk to go and look for the emails. Well, I'd like to, I'd like to take a look at the schedule, and I'm, I'm around today because uh, I didn't know how long this meeting was going to be. So here's how I'll, here's, this is my two cents worth. I don't have a problem if what, what Chris just said with Luke and Scott going, or Luke and, and Jason going in there. Uh, I think Scott should be given the opportunity if he wants legal representation in his office while this is going on, that he should have that opportunity as well. Um, so I'll leave it at that for, for my viewpoint. Um, I, I definitely don't think that anybody for, for privacy reasons should have carte blanche 
um, into somebody's um, personal space, but I understand uh, that. Yeah, that's, I that's, agree. I agree with you on that. That's that's how I. But see I it. also have to say that's you know you're talking about. Chief, I'm really about sorry, it. but you got to step in here. I mean, we have pictures, we got documents, we got everything. If this is this is breaking the law, we need somebody to and step no, up and. There's follow. no evidence right now that the law is being broken. It, this is a township matter that the township board has to discuss and make a decision. Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm all for respecting someone's privacy. It's but when I, when I show up at the township building on a Saturday because my family's away and I have a, little, a couple hours and I make a request to look at invoicing from vendors and I don't get a response, but I show up and every file and cabinet's locked that has never been locked before, as well as the network yeah. cable being pulled, I have issues with that. And, and Jason, that again has been talked by the board ways. and the board has never come to an agreement on access to all township files by board of supervisors members. And that's something that has to be brought back up so the policy decision is made, so clear direction is given to every board member on when they have the ability to access township files. If it's whenever you want, that, that's fine. That is a board decision and a, a policy was circulated and you disagreed with it and you were gonna mark it up and send I it back to the board. I wrote pretty please at the top. I mean, I'm so not, that needs to be brought back know. up and the board needs to decide once and for all, what is the policy for access to all township records by board members? That, that's something that's never been finalized. Okay, so you're okay with Luke and myself uh, with long as Scott uh, schedules okay with it? I, uh, what I said was I'm okay with it provided Luke, uh, Luke and yourself uh, predisposed time today and Scott is given the opportunity if he so chooses to have legal representation in there as well. That, that's just how I would view it as being fair. That's just my one take. I agree. And I'd like to know what this email is because I remember nothing about it. It's just, I'm not really sure. I mean, from 2015 to present, you know, I'm not getting responses from you. So to put my mind at ease so I can sleep, I'd like to just. Um, Do you have a list of certain specified emails you're, you're looking and, for? And anything. Because here's the other thing, we are holding all up township, business. township day, so if you could limit it to a set, set time, an hour, two hours, just yeah, so we have, you know what I mean? Um, but as I said, that's that's my take on what would be fair. Uh, Jay, you're welcome to uh, give your viewpoint, but. Well, I think it's a slippery slope, but I understand that, that it's, I, I agree that the computer and the emails are all township business, so they should be available. And then also, um, it's been brought to my attention that our alternate um, supervisor has, has relocated from the township. The, the alternate we, supervisor? What, I'm confused. You don't have the alternate for, for the vacancy. Oh, I'm sorry. So. Um, Who is that? Chuck, Chuck Malarkey. Oh, Chuck Marachi. Marachi. So, um, being that he's he moved out, I think that uh, we need to choose a new one uh, for the time being. And you know, I've seen George trying to volunteer at the budget committee, showing up at every meeting. He, he's well knowledgeable of, of uh, the processes. Um, he's an honest gentleman, and he's offered offered to Luke. So, I I'd like to make a motion to appoint George Sherbeck as the alternate uh, vacancy board um, from October 4th on. Um, I don't know if I can get a second or not. But. Um, I, I, I know George personally. I, I have no problem with that. Um, I, uh, I also knew Chuck, so um, I have no problem with it. Um, um, and again, this is vacancy only, so yeah. I'll second. I just, um, anything else? Um, no, I think that's it. Oh, was the vote well, that wasn't, there was no vote on that. There was a, a yeah, motion I and a second, and second, but there was no actual vote. You have to actually take a vote on it. Uh, so we'll go to open it up to, to uh, Supervisor Fisher. Well, you're, you're calling for a vote? Yes. I vote in favor. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, 
All right, so uh, the notice today will be the uniform and non-uniform pension committees will meet directly following this meeting in this room. Uh, and um, just a uh, note, the board will meet in executive session following the, that meeting for legal issues. Uh, and do I have an adjournment? Motion to adjourn. And I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.